he's going to celebrate this anti-Semitism bill. Let's see. There is a, a bill that passed through the House. It passed through with 70 votes against by Democrats, 21 votes against by Republicans. The, the kind of group that voted against. Um, a question. How come they criticize Hamas for not differentiating military deaths from civilians, but they keep yapping the 1200 number without differentiating the, the, the military deaths in Israel? Um, because every Israeli life is a real life of a human being. Every Palestinian life, on the other hand, is not. I hope I was able to clarify it for you. That's why I always say so much of this conversation is just conducted on the boundaries of, of adding a layer of civility onto two formative principles, unrestricted, unfettered, unregulated Islamophobia and might is right politics. That's it. And the quicker you recognize that, the easier it is for you to have these sorts of conversations with people. ran the gamut from people who are overtly anti-Semitic like Ilhan Omar to people who are sort of like borderline anti-Semitic to people who are just strong free speech libertarians. The reason is a badly... He's like the actual anti-Semites, strong free speech libertarians. Uh, people who are critical of Israel, uh, rabid anti-Semites, Ilhan Omar, Muslim, wears a hijab, anti-Semitic. Thought out bill, I'll explain. I'll explain also what the House thought it was doing here. So there is a bill called H.R. 6090. That's the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act of 2023. The bill, which is led by Representative Michael Lawler, who's a Republican from New York, has 13 Democratic co-sponsors. It will codify the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism in Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Okay, so let's explain what's going on here. Okay, right now, the reason that you are seeing a lot of angst from administrators on college campuses is because federal funding is tied to fulfillment of the Civil Rights Act. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 dictates there cannot be discrimination on the basis of shared ancestry, ethnic characteristics, or national origin. Environments of harassment on these basis can remove your federal funding at a university. So if, for example, there were to be giant rallies at a university that suggested that all black people should be re-enslaved and the university did nothing about that, that is already illegal under Title that's so funny that Ben's saying that because if that were to happen, Ben would be defending it. Excuse me, it's called free speech. They're just making an argument about why black people are servile and therefore deserve enslavement, which is the same exact argument that slavers made. And uh, it's a historically important argument to be made. And I think that I will fight to the death. I will fight to the death. Their right to be able to say it. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Yeah, Ben doesn't believe in the Civil Rights Act, unless we're talking about defending Israel. <laughs> in which case, as long as he can tie Judaism to Israel, he will defend the Civil Rights Act. There are, of course, plenty of instances where Ben has shit on the Civil Rights Act, as a matter of fact. It is pretty... F I love this. I love this situation because, like, even to the dumbest guy on the planet partially due to anti-Semitic leanings. Virtually every single person knows Ben Shapiro as the guy who hates identity politics. Okay? That's what he made his bread and butter on. And little do those people know that Ben Shapiro loves identity politics. It's just an identity he cares about. And that, that's not even Jewish people across the board, mind you. He is fucking insanely anti-Semitic all the time. It's just Jews who defend Israel. That's, and anyone who defends Israel, really. He wants only that group of people to be defended. Jewish, Christian, anti-Semitic, not anti-Semitic, doesn't matter. As long as you defend Israel unconditionally, Ben is here for you. Everyone else, fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> Now, there's been a lot of talk about the fact that that is a violation of free speech principles. It absolutely is. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is a full-scale violation of free speech principles. Oh, yo! Oh, that's so good. Oh, my God. Oh, that's awesome. It's like, <laughs> title, 
<laughs> Title six is a violation of free speech principles. It's really fucked up that it exists. <laughs> I told As you. Christopher Caldwell wrote in his book, The Age of Entitlement, this is replete throughout the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 is chock full of violations of the Constitution. <laughs> Title seven of the Civil Rights Act, for example, criminalizes private accommodations discriminating on the basis of oh this is so awesome oh it's so good he's doing the he's doing his anti-civil rights he's doing his anti-civil rights argument oh that's so sick this is a unique ben this is a rare ben okay he normally has the wherewithal not to do this he used to do it all the time back in the day there's still like plenty of public debates that you, uh, we can draw from but I haven't really seen this Ben in a while. And I love when he debate lords the, the civil rights of various categories. Private accommodations, like you own a bed and breakfast. It criminalizes that, right? You're now called a public accommodation. And now the federal government can step in and fine, regulate you, criminally prosecute you. He hates that. He hates that. He has openly fucking been like, you should not infringe on businesses. People will just simply go somewhere else. Okay, but they don't. And they didn't. And that's kind of the reason why this fucking uh, legislation exists to begin with. Because people were not doing that. They weren't just going somewhere else. They were specifically going to that. And all of the private corporations in surrounding areas were just all not offering accommodation to black people. So it's kind of the whole reason why the law and the civil rights movement happened. But uh, whatever. Let's keep going. It's a violation of what used to be a divide between private property and public property, which is why I've always had massive problems. I've talked about this for years with Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. I also yes. have massive problems with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act because Title VI of the Civil Rights Act is very unclear. He hates it. He's like, <laughs> why can't you let private business be racist to black people? It obviously violates free speech principles because it says that if you create, quote, a harassing environment on, for example, a college campus, or in a business that takes any sort of federal contract, the federal government can then remove money from you. And now, that being said, the Supreme Court has already cleared Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, and there appears to be no actual momentum inside Congress for getting rid of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. Isn't that a libertarian viewpoint? Yes, it is. Many libertarians are just as racist as Ben Shapiro is, so yes. Anyone that tells you that the federal government should not step in when many businesses in, in almost every fucking state, and in some states almost all businesses, are routinely discriminating against certain subsets of the population, and the federal government shouldn't step in, is a racist piece of shit. I will stand on that. Okay? That is insane. Now, again, if you got rid of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, what would actually happen at campuses? Okay, you would have some rallies that were really bad. Or maybe you wouldn't, because it would turn out that now colleges and universities would have student codes, and they would enforce their student codes. One of the great lies about universities generally, it's one of the reasons I don't like public universities nearly as much as I like private universities, generally speaking, mainly because public universities, you run into all sort of viewpoint and free speech concerns. Universities, believe it or not, were not meant to just be repositories of everyone's thought are equivalent. Universities, as we talked about at the very top, Columbia College, Columbia University, when it was King's College, was designed to foment particular views. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's quite good. The idea that a university actually promulgates virtue and does not take a morally relativistic stance about good and bad, that to me is a good thing. The problem with classical liberalism in general which is sort of the idea that all viewpoints are to be treated with equal fervor. Classical liberalism only works so long as there are boundaries to the classical liberalism. Meaning that if everyone shares a basic notion of virtue, then yeah, we can have arguments within that basic notion of virtue about what's good and what's bad. But if that completely disappears, classical liberalism turns very quickly into simple moral relativism, where we're supposed to treat neo-Nazism, communism, and constitutional conservatism as exactly the same thing on a college campus. I don't think... We shouldn't. The only acceptable viewpoint that you just mentioned is communism. Just saying. The other stuff is, I mean, you just repeated 
You just repeated neo-Nazism twice, so I don't know why you had to bring that up twice. Constitutional conservatism, neo-Nazism. Redundant. Redundant. Redundancies. What's next? You're going to be like Republicans? Okay, same shit. Uh, <clears throat> the universities have an obligation to do this. I don't. Are you looking for that perfect Mother's Day gift that will make the women in your life feel pampered and appreciated? For, um, G I want to see him worm out of this. I really do. I, I wonder where he's going to go. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't like the anti-Semitism bill. When it comes to Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. I suspect he might go with like a any or all. If the current current way persists with the civil rights act then this is valid and that uh you know that protection should extend to jews as well why wouldn't it and if it uh you know if this anti-semitism bill doesn't go through then we should uh, abolish the civil rights act as well because it's unconstitutional and anti-first amendment i suspect that that's probably where he will try to go to knowing full well that like the other thing is insane like so therefore, it's just a tacit endorsement of the anti-Semitism bill without openly saying it because everyone in his fucking fan base, aside from being rabid anti-Semites themselves, uh, also understandably are, are peeved by this anti-Semitism bill greatly uh, expanding on the definition of anti-Semitism and creating another mechanism of enforcement uh, that that squashes dissent against a foreign nation, a foreign nation that Ben happens to not live at, but uh, weirdly enough, will consistently advocate on behalf of. I don't understand it. Like I said, it's like, bro, go live there. Then you don't want to live there. Why the fuck are you defending it so aggressively from from here, where you choose to live? I don't understand it. Why are you trying to fuck up what's going on here in America? at the behest of Israel. Has been used by administrators on college campuses to protect their favorite intersectional minorities only. So, as we all know, if these were protests right now that were being held on college campuses and they were calling for, say, killing black people as opposed to killing Israelis or killing Jews, if they were chanting for the elimination of an entire state, an entire Muslim state, for example, if it said Saudi Arabia ought to Bro, what do you mean? You literally do that almost every day when Iran comes up. What are you saying? You defend Japan and don't live here? I don't know why people say that about Japan. I'm fucking insanely critical of Japan's xenophobia, and it's also lack of recognition for its historic war crimes that are literally damn near identical to the Holocaust, almost one-to-one. -one. Especially when we're talking about what they did in fucking China. So the notion that I don't, <laughs> the notion that I don't, uh, uh, the notion that I show this level of sympathy, just like I defend the top of the man, it's 4:53. You guys are fucked up. It's 4:53, chat. That's not a gotem. You in the chat are. Offering support to bad baits. Engage in positive reinforcement for good baits. Okay? Yeah, you're reinforcing bad bait, dude. Oh, nah, Crody, he got you. Why are you cheesing, fam? Perhaps you're cheesing because you're subscribed to the top of the hour and you know that you won't be seeing the three minute ad break. 34 of Kitty 50. Thank you for the 25 gift to subs. You say it's too early. You're the white moderate that MLK was talking about. Yeah, I'm putting a timeline on another man's emancipation. 34 MK50 with another 50 gift to subs. God damn.
Here's the three minute outbreak now. To be wiped off the map completely. You know that the administrators would shut that down forthwith, right? Because there are groups that rank high on the intersectionality hierarchy and those. Dude, 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 dude. Dude. One, this is not an argument that pro-Palestinian demonstrators are making. Nobody's saying wipe off Israel from the fucking map, or even if they are, this does not represent the broad movement and what the actual arguments are. Okay? You, on the other hand, and counter-protesters on the pro-Israel side, on the other hand, are actually saying Israel's in the right, as it is currently in the process of wiping out every Palestinian from the land. So if there's one side that is actually advocating for ethnic cleansing, it's the side that's currently defending the side doing the ethnic cleansing. But as far as like, as far as an advocacy for wiping out an entire fucking uh, population of the planet, you absolutely, you absolutely have advocated to wipe out Iran off of the planet. Okay, so shut the fuck up. This is what they make Prozac with, and we all know you won't ever shut the fuck up about taking that. Jesus. <laughs> Those groups are preferred. Those groups are the ones you're not allowed to discriminate against. So Title VI has been unevenly applied for literally decades, which is why you can see open anti-white discrimination on campus all the damn time, even though it's forbidden by Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 64. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 64 is at least facially neutral with regard to which groups can be victimized by discrimination. But in application, I have yet to see a case where anti-white discrimination, which happens all the time, harassing environments for white students on college campuses are quite real, and they've been quite real for decades. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. He, he had to bring it back. He had to bring it back to like the real grievances. Anti-white discrimination in college. College open spaces should only be for white people. Is that his argument? No, he's, if you ask him, he will say the same dog shit that they've been saying since like 2014, which is that having safe spaces on college campuses for like queer students, for example, is actually disrespectful to the white heterosexual students. It's actually anti, it's actually not allowed. Gates. People on college campuses shouting anti- What's wrong with the bill condemning anti-Semitism? You anti-Semitic? Oh, come on, bro. Come on. We already ran the top of the hour ad break. Yeah, I know. I know. You got me, dude. Yeah, you got me. I already ran it. Hi, white racist slogans? That's been a thing since I was in college and long before. And nobody's ever said that's a, that's a Title VI violation. Hey, so- Because it's not, dumbass. Having safe spaces in a learning environment is productive and good. I hate this fucking argument all the time. Here, the example I will give you is this. If you have a safe space for queer students, okay, where only queer students are allowed to be in, then individuals who are questioning their sexuality can actually get the helpful learning tools and, and social programs without being in fear of constantly having to fucking debate their existence to a bunch of random interlocutors that want to go there, invade the space, and fucking annoy and harass them. Trust me, they can get that level of harassment in every other part of the college campus with the exception of this one random fucking safe space. Oftentimes, it's in a lot of time in a community hall. Holy fuck. People always go, that's not how the real world works. It's like, 
first of all, that is how the real world works. It's precisely the reason why there is a need for safe spaces. Why the fuck are we centering the feelings of heterosexual white students when we're talking about like one fucking random area over the course of an entire week where there's like an hour where students can have discussion without having to fucking debate. They already do that every other hour of the week in every other space on the college campus. Why the fuck are you trying to Israel the safe spaces? It's like, sorry, you can't have it. I have to come in there with my Mark 84s and blow up your safe space with my debates. <laughs> it's so fucking funny whenever people routinely bring up this idea that some students having a safe space in an allotted time is actually uh is actually hurting students that want to fuck up the safe space it's the same exact principle behind people complaining that these encampments exist on college campuses and it's making jewish students feel less safe it's bullshit it's not about jewish students at all it's about zionist students who want to agitate only they are not allowed into one specific part of the campus for a very short period of time and they get fucking mad about it why the fuck do we ever have to take this seriously i do not understand i hate that we are having this conversation over and over again title six has always been applied only to the left's favorite intersectional groups so what the Congress was attempting to do today with this bill was to define anti-Semitism such that Jews would also be protected. Now, theoretically, I just saw the clip about sugar in rockets. Lamau, did he do any reading beyond one line? Sugar is used in early rockets was pure powdered sugar. They didn't have the capa capability to extract sugar from processed foods or soda. And it was simply a psychological move to blockade those products and try to foster internal dissent. No, you don't understand. The early Palestinians actually had profound capabilities of taking Oreos and turning it into not just rocket fuel, but rockets themselves. That's right. This chatter is shitting on uh, Sugarelli and his sugar rockets. That's right. You don't get it. You don't know. The Palestinians are, are both rabid dogs, but also brilliant scientists who have been able to turn Oreo cookies back into not only just rocket fuel, but also rockets themselves. That's right. Yeah, these fucking dipshit snowflakes don't know that Desert Storm was one with guided missiles powered by Frosted Flakes. A woman's shelter is a safe space in the real world. Never hear about them. Talk about abolishing that. Oh, God, don't mention that, Chatter. They're going to start trying to abolish women's shelters. They have Star Trek dematerializer super technology. They just choose to fight with thrown rocks because they're hiding the technological advantage. They're hiding until the real intifada. Yeah. Anyway, here is the real part of the conversation where Ben opens up. Uh, what his perspective on the bill looks like. Find anti-Semitism such that Jews would also be protected. Now, theoretically, white people should already be protected because, again, discrimination based on race is forbidden by Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 64. Discrimination of Jews is forbidden, but discrimination against Jews 
is a bit of a weird category because the anti-Semitism is a category difference from racism. They're not, anti-Semitism is not a subset of racism. It's an entirely different theory of discrimination. Not better, not worse, not more important, not less important, just different. Huh. Anti-Semitism in its essence is a conspiracy theory about the shadowy power of the Jews behind the institutions. About how the Jews are conspiratorially ganging up together in order to harm other people, and that's why they must be stopped. That, that's the common running thread of all anti-Semitism. So what Congress was trying to do was create a working definition of anti-Semitism such that they could then apply Title VI restrictions to go after the funding for the universities. That's what this bill was about. The problem is the bill fails in two particular ways. I mean, this just sounds like racism, but okay. It fails, number one, because it obviously is unconstitutionally vague, right? It, it, it operates as yet another, another element of what should originally have been an unconstitutional hate speech law. As I say, all of Title VI is an unconstitutional... Oh my God, he's saying that the Civil Rights Act is hate speech. Constitutional hate speech law. But this adds to that by incorporating within it the international... Holocaust remembrance definition, working definition of anti-Semitism. And that working definition of anti-Semitism has some cases that are included within it that obviously are, are vaguely worded to say the least and probably encroach, almost certainly encroach on free speech concerns, the IHRA definition. So the, the IHRA definition of, of anti-Semitism, for example, which is what was codified in this House bill, 6090, it says, quote, anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred toward Jews. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism are directed toward Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property, toward Jewish community institutions and religious facilities. So that's quite vague. So the IRHA and the IHRA then gives a bunch of examples. And some of these examples are, in fact, good examples of anti-Semitism. And some of them are quite vague in how they're worded or in some cases just. Bro, there is no whoa. <laughs> He's like, he's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I mean, depending on what he's going to say is vague, I'm going to be shocked, I think. He's like, listen, <laughs> some anti-Semitism is good, actually. Like, for example, when it's Ann Coulter doing the anti-Semitism, she's a supporter of Israel, so I obviously don't care that she's being anti-Semitic. Plain overbroad. So, for example, here's an example of what's obviously anti-Semitic, calling for aiding or justifying the killing or harming of Jews in the name of a radical ideology or an extremist view of religion. Right, that obviously, I think everyone agrees, is anti-Semitism. Making mendacious, okay. dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such, or the power of Jews as collective, such as especially, but not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. Okay, again, that seems like pretty rote anti-Semitism. True. But there are some of these that are overbroad. So, for example, drawing comparisons of contemporary Israeli policy to that of the Nazis. Now, I can see why the IHRA is saying that that swings into anti-Semitism because when- Oh my God. Okay, never mind. He was, okay. Can you accuse the Jews- of Speak on it, King. What? Doing to other people what the Nazis did to the Jews. It's uncomfortably borderline anti-Semitic in the same way that it's uncomfortably borderline racist if you were to accuse black people of enslaving white people. Right? It's, it's, it's weird and, but however- that definition may have worked better 30, 40 years ago. It doesn't particularly work well now because everyone compares everything to the Nazis. So comparing Israel to the Nazis is basically rote at this point. It's what everyone does with everyone at all times. Trump is Hitler. Okay. Okay. Never mind. He's kind of cooking. I mean, I was not expecting him to say that. This is definitely against what Ben Shapiro, I take back what I said. So far, he's not wrong, which is shocking. Biden is Hitler. Everyone is Hitler. Everyone I don't like is a Nazi. So that is now an overbroad definition. Or for example, there's a claim here. It says using the symbols and images associated with classic. Wait, hasn't he literally said Joe Biden is a uh, Joe Biden looks like Hitler or is Hitler? I feel like he might have said that. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, Anti-Semitism, e.g. claims of Jews killing Jesus or blood libel to characterize Israel or Israelis. Now, again, I know what they're going for. What they're going for is the Sturmer cartoon of, for example, an Israeli soldier who is drinking the blood of a Palestinian child, right? Clearly anti-Semitic. Or an Israeli soldier who is killing Jesus. 
and the G- and Jesus is a Palestinian, like, clearly anti-Semitic. However, the way this is phrased suggests that it is anti-Semitic to say that Jews killed Jesus. Well, according to the New Testament, Jews did involve themselves in the killing of Jesus. Jews, the Sanhedrin, according to the New, again, I'm a, I'm a- Bro, bro, wait, what? Yo, he's like, Jews did kill Jesus. <laughs> You should be able to say that. The original sin. The the underpinning of like anti-Semitic sentiment amongst the entire Christian population that led to all the pogroms that led to, in some instances, the justification for the Holocaust. Totally. <laughs> like, that's cr- okay. I'm a Jew, so this is not my book. But my best understanding from all my Christian friends and from reading the New Testament is that the Jews under... Under the New Testament, the Jews referred Jesus for prosecution to Pontius Pilate, who then convicted, out of fear of riots, Jesus to death, and then gave the Jews the opportunity to free Jesus, and they chose not to do so. And in the book of Matthew, there's a verse where it says, his blood be upon us and our children. Right? That's all from the New Testament. A Christian saying all that stuff doesn't make Christians anti-Semitic. I think what the IHRA was actually going... Bro, it's more so... I mean, Christians don't just say that. It's not like... (laughs) It's not like they're just referencing the book when they're saying that. They're referencing the book to justify killing Jews and to to talk about how... to talk about how uh, nefarious the Jews are. Like, nobody brings that up Unless it's like fucking a theology class or something. Like, what the fuck is happening? There's a whole Wikipedia page about how this isn't really the case and an interpretation is wrongly used to be anti-Semitic. Here's what Ben's referencing. Yeah, I saw the fucking psychos get real mad. I mean, these are definitely fucking anti-Semitic freaks that are like, see, the Jews are making it illegal to preach the gospel. This is the funniest. This is the Marjorie Taylor Greene argument. I think it's the funniest way to criticize this bill. So for that note, I give this a 10 out of 10. It's literally like looking at a bill that basically says like criticism of Israel is akin to anti-Semitism. Okay. Completely avoiding that part of the conversation 